Let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, machine learning was called artificial intelligence. And let me tell you why. This is a human neuron. A human neuron has this structure. You have this nucleus and we have this stem structure called axon. Axon has some terminals and different terminals are connected to different neurons. So in a sense, a neuron combines electricity coming from other neurons, adapt all the electricity and creates a new response. Why is this relevant to machine learning? Well, back in the 40s and 50s in the last century, guys like Frank Rosenblatt and Charles Wyman had this idea. If we want to go from zero and ones to more human-like computing, we have to think like neurons. So we have to translate binary codes into analog computation, in which neurons should be adding electricity, which is a continuous variable, and producing an output, which is more like a zero and a one. This is a representation of the idea. We have different inputs x1, xn, that resemble electricity coming through the terminals to into this neuron. We are combining different inputs and this is important even in biology, so the strength of these couplings is not the same for all the neurons. Actually, probably you hear this model that neurons that fire together are linked together and this means that whenever we smell something or we see something familiar, we have a lot of ideas related to that and this is related to the strength of these connections. So different weights combine in this neuron and then we have to add uh, this constant which modulates the threshold. So above the threshold we have an output and below the threshold this neuron is not firing. I again, in, in biology things are not binary, are more analog. So the activation function is something like this. This is a smoother one. And this activation function resembles logistic regression. If you haven't seen the video on logistic regression, stop this one and go there. We have a drug and we know that above a given threshold the drug is effective and below is not effective. This is what reality would like us to be, but in reality we have some overlap. So for some patients we, we have cure even for low doses and for some patients even high doses are not producing the cure. So let's use carrot to show you how logistic regression and neural networks are more or less the same. So I'm going to train using a data set. I'm going to do another video explaining this, but ba basically now just get this idea. So th we have this categorical variable survive and we have the dose ranging from 0 to 1. So let's train both methods and then the summary of logistic regression, if you remember, is given as the intercept and the coefficient proportional to the dose. This is the bias and this is the weight. If you remember, the exponential of this means that when the dose is 0, basically if we are here, what are the odds of getting cured? And in this case, the exponential of minus 12 is almost 3 tenths to the minus 6. This is 3 in a million probability of, of getting cured. Okay, let's move on. What if we compute the summary of the neural network? As you can see here, this is the bias going to the output, and this is the weight for the input translating to the output. And the numbers are the same. Why are the same? Because we have the same activation function and the same topology. So mathematically, we are using the same function and computationally, this is the way in which we call caret. So size zero means that not that we don't have neurons, it means that we only have one neuron at the end, in this, this survival. Again, if we compute the confusion matrices, you can see here that the results are almost the same. So let me emphasize this analogy again. So we have this neural network, one neuron, input, the weight is this thick black line, and then the bias. Okay, the weight in this case was 45 and the bias minus 12. Remember, our activation function was like this. This is bias and this is the weight. And I'm going to plot these numbers and I'm going to play a little bit with this function. So what if we take those equals zero? Let's do some mathematics here. Let's take the weight, 45.56 times zero, plus the bias. In this case, it's simply the bias. Then plug this into this activation function and we get this number. And this number is almost zero, so let's plot this number here. Let's try now with 0 0.3. 
Again, 0.3 times the weight plus the bias is 0.968 and then use the activation function and give us a probability of 0.72 and this is more or less here. If we repeat this for different points then you see th the idea. The probability of being cured is almost zero for low doses, it's almost one for high doses and we have some uncertainty in the middle. If we smooth these points a little bit we get the sigma function again. So this uh, orange line is basically this activation function. And again, as you can see here, we have the same interpretation for logistic regression than for one neuron. But what if we have this situation? If we if increase a little bit the dose and then we start to see some tox toxicity in, of this chemical, of this drug. Then we could think, okay, I, I could try to use one neuron, but one neuron is going to produce this sigmoid and this is not going to work in this part. We could try another type of fitting and then we are going to misclassify these points here. So ideally we would like to have something like this, but we don't know how to do that. So here's where the magic of neural networks begins. So instead of using one neuron, we're going to combine different neurons. So this is going to be specialized in this part, for instance. This is going to be specialized in this part. And maybe if we add a different number of neurons, we are going to have the specialization in, in different regions. And we are going to combine this in another neuron, which is going to give us the output. So this is the concept of neural network. And the idea is built uh, from very simple blocks, build some complexity, combining uh, smartly these different blocks. And this is the same in biology. So we have different neurons combined in a, a smart way with different strengths. And one neuron specializes in, in, let's see, in smell, other neurons specialize in memory, but combining those uh, neurons in a complex topology, we have the concept of smell, taste, feelings, and so on and so forth. So this very simple topology in which we have one output neuron and a hidden layer of neurons combined upon together is called the perceptron. And I'm going to devote another video to explain that.